May 13th, 1985, years of conflict between the city of Philadelphia and a small urban group known as MOVE ended in a violent day-long encounter. It was one of the most devastating days in the modern history of this city. MOVE was sort of hard to define, but they were an urban group that was sort of separatist and rebellious, and they had an ongoing conflict with the Philadelphia police for about 10 years at that point. There had been an earlier violent incident where a cop had been killed, and nine MOVE members, who became known as the MOVE Nine, were incarcerated for a murder, and they always were in conflict with that judgment. So when they regrouped later in 1985, they were now in a row house for this confrontation. It turns very violent. Uh, the police use over 10,000 rounds of ammunition firing into a house with children and adults in it. The house is fortified, and the police feel as though they've lost one, and both parties sort of feel the wounded party. So things really spiral out of control, and the police wind up dropping explosives on the roof, um, military C4 explosives. There has just been a huge explosion here. We don't know what it means, but it just shook the whole place. There was a huge blast. And then when that does not dislodge, in particular this bunker that sits on their roof, uh, they allow the fire to burn. The command is given to let the fire burn. And the result of that is that uh, 11 people, five children and six adults are killed in the house, and three city blocks are burned to the ground in one of the largest fires in the city's history. The film takes a different approach to the historical documentary, although somewhat of a trend perhaps, which is to live totally within the archival record. There's no narration or talking heads. There's no reflection from the present day uh, sort of helping a viewer to interpret that. It's more the past is seen in present tense and it plays out in real time. I was 11 when this incident happened, and so that was roughly the age of some of the children in the house. Anyone who's living in the city at that time remembers it, but I was at that age where it was just right on the cusp of really being a kid where you're sheltered and um, you know, your parents protect you and sort of tell you the world is a fair place. And this was that event that sort of cracked that shell that sort of um, opened my eyes to the wider world. One extreme, there's, you know, sort of, um, you know, men sit around in a smoky room and have a conspiracy. This story will never be told, right? We'll fix it, right? We'll sweep it under the carpet. And on the other extreme, it's all just coincidence, right? And, and I, I just don't think it's that simple. I think somewhere in the middle, there's an understanding. I think a lot of people in the city at a lot of different levels and a lot of different positions in Philadelphia see it as a black eye, see it as an embarrassment. And it's not that they necessarily sat around and conspired to keep it a secret, but there's a tendency. I think what the story tells me and what I tried to portray in the film is that the whole story represents sort of indelibly a question, which is how does the unthinkable become reality? I mean, the whole thing is unthinkable, right? So in a sense, the most surprising thing is the outcome, is the result. It's almost not about what's individually surprising so much as what's mundane and how these things add up, how it, how it is reasonable at times, and you see how that person made that decision, and you see these conflicting points of view. There's an irony to it. There's a uh, there's a sad, not surprising to it.